Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So, in this video, I created a little boss fight using commands. And I'm going to try to explain some basic commands that I use to create this boss fight that are uh, sitting up here and also some sitting down there. So, um, let's get started. First, what you want to do is go into survival mode. You'll notice that there's an empty door, but as soon as you go in um, and hit this button, the door will close behind you. So I've given myself a Neverite sword with sharpness, some protection free unbreakable helms, because each time the boss spawns, it takes away like about half of your armor durability, and I didn't want to keep replacing it each time in case I needed to redo this video's filming. So I basically just gave all of them unbreakability. And I have a sharpness 5 sword and this bow that you get from killing the boss, plus some enchanted golden apples. So um, let me hit the button, and it spawns in the boss. <laughs> then you'll have to um, kill these guys. I'm not doing it in a very smart way. I should probably be like backing up or something like this. Oops. And then go on to a boss. He spawns in these um, guys with clay on their heads, which makes it really easy to figure out which guys are weak. These guys have a maximum health of 10, and they also have a wither effect on them, so they just keep dying behind you if you don't attack them for too long. But they're the guys that really shred through your armor, because they keep hitting you. Okay, so a boss seems kind of weak, but that's mostly just because... Yeah. That's mostly just because I have protection free on all my helmet, boots, and leggings. Most of the time, I have to eat at least two golden apples with no protection and no sharpness. So, this is a pretty difficult boss. Um, they drop different stuff, like some of the strong ones drop <coughs> swords and... He drops his helm, which actually makes you slightly more powerful. It's actually really powerful. Yeah. So, um, let's start the boss again. This time I won't be using any golden apples. And you'll see that they damage you really fast. And notice how the... Exit is closed up behind me again now. You don't have to manually reset it each time you do a boss fight or anything. And everything is already completely um, prepared as soon as you hit the button. So let me just kill this guy. I guess I have to eat a golden apple. Okay, um, and I think he's about dead now. As soon as he dies, the door will open up. And as you can see, the door has opened. And now I could walk out and show you guys how to make this. Alright, so the first thing you might notice is I have this very nice, like, grid particle effect below me. And that's because I just figured out um, today that you could use spread players to spread um, entities as well. So, I run execute at U12345B, so that takes my position run spread players and then my position the spread distance is zero um the max range is free so i think that's your radius outwards so here's so this is the block i'm standing on one two three and under 40 and i'll under um and I'll explain how that works in a second. Then, 
this is false for respect teams. That's not really that important. And then it just keeps spreading these armor stands with the tag flame. And here's just a particle effect. Same execution using execute commands. Um, it just runs summoning particles, which basically makes it summon particles at the armor stands. And the armor stands only summon particles. Um, I mean, the armor stands basically only teleport under y equals 40. So if I look over here, this is y equals 36. And this ceiling um, is y41, meaning that these won't teleport to it. And instead, they'll teleport to the next lowest block below it which is here. So as you can see, the middle of these ancient debris lights up as I walk over them, which looks pretty cool. But these black stones do not, because this ceiling is at Y40, meaning that if I go outside the arena, you should see these showing up, which is a pretty cool effect. You could actually see I used a different particle for the insides, a lava particle. The same thing as the spread players, but instead of doing execute, I just put the command block right in the center, and then I just run spread players from that position. And you might notice how there are some flame particles over here and some over here. That's because these are where the hoppers and stuff are, and these are at Y41, meaning that they block the armor stands from teleporting to the highest possible position, which is normally here at Y40. Instead, they go to the next highest position, which is down here inside the arena. Um, I could fix that by setting the spread player's height higher and on top of these walls, just building upwards like this so it wouldn't be able to spawn anyway. But this is just a proof of concept and I'm not spending too much time on that. Next, here's the door contraption. So, it checks if the boss mob is still alive. Then, it takes a comparator output from that, and it runs either this one, which sets a gold block as soon as I spawn in a new one, and it replaces this with air as soon as it doesn't work. Well, as soon as it returns false, which basically means as soon as I kill it. And here's this block. So first it kills every single mob with the tag bone monster, which is all of the things the um, boss summons, plus all of the ones that are summoned at the start. So this is useful for resetting the entire arena. If I hit the button twice, which I'll demonstrate later, you'll see that the previous mobs just get instantly killed. Here's the Bone Monster King, it's a really long command. And then here are all the rest of the mobs. Here we have a little hopper chain that basically summons a new um, a concrete powder on head guy at the position of the bone monster boss and you can see that I'm using execute commands it executes at the position of that if I have multiple bone monster bosses it'll summon one at each one each time this is run which is kind of useful I like how the execute command allows people to um, have functionality for multiple bosses at the same time And here it just kills all the bones and all the arrows because when I was first testing this, there were a ton of bones and arrows on the ground dropped by the monsters the guy summons and then they die to a wither 10 seconds later. Which basically just leaves a bunch of items on the floor that lag the game a lot if I don't fight the boss. So that just kills them. And I think that's all pretty much. Yeah, oh yeah, and here's you pressing the button twice. So first time it summons all these guys, 
and it also summons these concrete powder guys. And if I hit it, all of them instantly die and it um, spawns a lot of new ones. Yeah, and I guess then you can just kill them all. I'm just gonna break out though because I don't want to kill him. And yeah, thanks for watching this very short, um, short but sweet video on commands. If you want to know how I did these commands, I'm using a command creator called mCreator. I mean, so if you guys want to know how I use these commands and make them, I basically use a command creator called MC Stacker, which allows me to create commands using drop down menus. And then I'm able to like further these commands by just modifying them in game inside the command blocks. So they're pretty good, especially for the execute if entity commands. I would probably never have figured that out without it. So it's a good place to learn the command syntaxes and everything. And I guess that's the end of the video because I don't want this getting too long. So bye guys.